Welcome to B-Roll Conversations. My name is Cyril Zuma. I am chilling with such an amazing human being today. As you guys know, on B-Roll Conversations, I bring just absolutely amazing people. And this gentleman, I happened to bump into him. We are both working on a project currently for a Netflix show. You can actually go watch it, which is called uh, Smart Money Woman. And he's a cinematographer on this show. And we happened to just bump into each other via conversation. And I found out he is so interesting. He has done such amazing work that I believe like everybody should actually know about it. And I think everybody should even know more about it. So Casey, welcome to Bureau Conversations, brother. How Thank are you, you doing? Thank you so much, my guy. Yeah, welcome, bro. Welcome, welcome. So tell me, first of all, before we even go anywhere, how's your, how's your stay in South Africa been so far? Uh, this is my third time in South Africa. Okay. Second time in Joba. Okay. It's been amazing so far, no, bro. Not even gonna lie. Um, we barely had time to do anything, but last last night was late. We were out last night. Okay. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and so we traveled from Cape Town and now we're in Johannesburg. Between the two cities, which one do you think actually is like is pretty dope? And you'd probably live in. I think I prefer Cape Town. Cape so Town, yeah. Yeah, Cape Cape Town got this vibe. And last time I was in Cape Town, I was in Long Street. There was a party at Long Street. It was okay. It was so wild, bro. <laughs> it was Long so Street wild. is pretty wild, right? Yeah, like I mean, but it was it was dope. But but this time I didn't like really have time to go out. Yeah, we just landed and went straight to work. Yeah, and moment to finish working, we were on a plane back to Joburg. We came here and went straight to work again. Yesterday was the only time I got a break. Okay, you know, throughout my stay here, I got a break and you know went out yesterday or when. Bungee jumping. Yeah, we went bungee jumping. I saw you actually did that. How, how, how was that experience? Bro, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I just told myself if I was going to jump, right? If I make it out alive, I knew that God really loves me. <laughs> yeah, straight up. Because that was also me. Yeah, when you, and when, when you I throw yourself down, over. People were like, oh, how are you? I'm like, look, I'm alive, bro. <laughs> I'm alive, but it was good. Yeah, it, was yeah. really, it was sick. And yeah. then later at night, I went to, for dinner. From dinner, we came back. It was like prep. Went to the club. We came back this morning. So I'm wearing these glasses, bro, because I don't know what my eyes look like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm sure they look good. We're recording 4K here, man. <laughs> okay, so before we even get started into the podcast, please introduce yourself to the B-Roll Conversations. I definitely don't think my introduction of you has done justice. So please introduce yourself to the audience. Um, my name is um, Casey Obiajo. I am a cinematographer from Nigeria, based in Lagos. Nigeria, um, traveling the world, uh, living my dream, doing the only thing I know how to do, which is being a cinematographer. Mm, very, very much interesting. So I want to talk about your childhood just a little bit. Like, I believe your childhood sort of shapes sometimes can shape, um, you know, how you think and um, how you operate in some degree. How was your childhood now looking at like, you know, where you are right now? I'm going to say it was, it was pretty rough, man. Childhood, my childhood isn't something that, you know, that I really, really, like, enjoyed a lot. Yeah. Because um, my parents were divorced. So, you know, it was kind of crazy living with my dad sometimes, living with my, just myself and my little sister, living with my dad sometimes, living with my mom sometimes, you know. Um, one way with my dad, most of the time my dad was at work, so we had to stay with grandma and all of that. And... It was it's, it was rough, yeah. but what shaped my career? I think the first inspiration I got was my mom, because my mom is a cinematographer. Oh wow! Yeah, that's so amazing. Yeah, <laughs> my mom is a cinematographer. She was the first inspiration that I got. And she first she was a journalist, and I, was, I I did journalism too. So she was a journalist, then a cinematographer. She's retired now, though. Okay. So you know, but I followed exactly in her footsteps. So, Being a journalist first, then full time cinematographer. Right? I mean, so that was the very first inspiration I got because my mom went to film school. She started film. Okay. Um, and you know, she practiced. She made some films, local films, back in Nigeria. And yeah, you know, I mean, that was um the first thing because I remember seeing my mother work. 
and it was I used to really go help her out on set. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. did you know what you what what she was doing back then? Yeah, of course I know. What she okay, was doing. So I knew. She, I she was aware you. of what my mother was doing. I knew what she was doing. I was fully aware. Okay. At that point, but my life had not like really taken off because I was a teenager and. You know, I started making money at a teenage age. Okay. Know? So I was already hustling back in Joss, yeah. Nigeria, Plaza State. I was making a little money here and there. So, you know, in the process of doing that, I really didn't care much. But, you know, I had an experience that really changed my life because uh, I went to a film school. You know, my final year, we're doing an uh, <clears throat> internship. So I went to a studio to do an internship. And I got fired on my first day. I'm like, it was embarrassing for me, you know, getting fired on my first day. What did you do? Bro, I tell the story all the time. <laughs> all the damn time. I, I spoiled the camera. <laughs> you you spilt on the camera? You... I spoiled the camera. Oh, shit. So you know how you insert cards yeah, yeah. into the camera? Yeah. I inserted the card wrongly. The wrong end of the card. Oh, so shucks. all the pain inside got, it's, it's got split. Oh, so shucks. the camera couldn't record. The director, who was also the producer, Papel, at the time in Abuja, Nigeria, just got super mad. I was like, "Get fired!" And <laughs> Shucks, that I mean, that 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 is crazy to be actually. This was school, you say? Yeah, my final year in school. So does that mean you you pass or you fail? I failed, of course. No, not like according in school. to them. Yeah. So this is what happened. He fired me, and I refused to leave. <laughs> so I told him, I looked him dead in the eye and I'm like, I'm sorry, sir, but I came here for internship and I'm not going to leave until my internship is done. Wow. So I stayed till the, we finished, it was a movie called, uh, I don't, can't remember the name, was it Blue Flames or some stuff like that? I can't really remember what the name was. Okay. But yeah, I did that and he said, I fired you. And I said, I can't go. I remember KP at my own looking at me and like, I like how enthusiastic you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's an actor, an Nigerian actor. His name is KP at my own. I like, so he went and begged on my behalf, him and Bim Barkintola. I'm not sure these people remember these, these things, but they yeah. actually went and begged on my behalf, begged the director and said, let him stay. Yeah. He really wants to learn. It's unfortunate that this happened, but just let him stay, finish the project. Yeah. And, you know, after that, you can decide if you want to retain him or not. Yeah. And, you know, I, the bag on my behalf, I resumed working. They picked on me throughout the project. I mean, somebody can do something downstairs yeah. and I'm upstairs. I'm like, Casey, <laughs> I knew that was you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was crazy. But at the end of the project, the guy called me into his office. I'm like, I like you a lot. You know, a lot happened between the time that you spoiled our camera yeah till this very day a lot has happened and changed yeah i like how enthusiastic you are I like who you've become and the sky is definitely the limit for you yeah uh, i looked at it i i took what he said to me and i went back to film school because i was going into my final year so i'm back to film school i'm like nah bro i need to make a living off this stuff so were you doing cinematography then already so you know like when it happens in, in film school you get to do everything okay i did makeup Oh wow! I, yeah, I did makeup, I did catering, I did sound, yeah. I did light. And you must be good at all these, eh? No, really. That's, you do, you know the end, basics. I, yeah, of course you know the basics, okay. right? So, but then in your final year, you, you have to pick a major, right? Yeah. So my final year, I picked writing and cinematography. Um, I know I'm a lazy writer. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, writing is like you know really the, the thing right now. I mean, if you're a writer, you probably are in high demand. Of course. But I am a very lazy writer. So <laughs> okay. I just, you know what? I'll stick to cinematography. I will stick to this and, you know, make a living out of it. Yeah. Since I got fired, I'm not, I'm not going to just let that slide. Yeah. I need to make it work. Okay. So let's reel it back a little bit now. So what is cinematography for somebody who doesn't know what cinematography is? I mean, it's a very long word and it sounds very complicated. Uh, just uh, how do I define this? I'm, I'm not going to define it according to the book. Yeah. According to yourself, really. Yeah. I'm just going to say it's just like, Painting moving pictures. Okay. You know, so, painting ideas. So am I the guy that's behind the camera? Am I, you know, the lady that's um, directing the whole thing? What What is it? So think of a cinematographer as the guy behind the camera who brings um, the director's um, ideas to life. Okay. Basically. You know so, what? Director says, I want this person to be floating. 
okay. the cinematographer would have figured out like how do I make this person to float? Okay. Like, okay, you know what? We need some VFX, we need to light it this way, the camera angle needs to be here, the camera needs to move from here to this spot, the lighting needs to be this harsh or this soft, or okay. this, you know, all that little little details. And by the time you put that together, that's the job of the cinematographer. Okay, so now this that poses something so interesting. I mean, so as a cinematographer. Are you then in charge of everyone else or on set because you want your lighting this way, you want things done this way? You do you then hire a team, you know, that also helps you out, or can a cinematographer work on their own? That depends though, because my journey, I started off as a documentary cinematographer. Okay. And well, different projects, different approach. Yeah, yeah. And as a documentary cinematographer, I prefer to work with the minimal minimal team okay as small as possible yeah don't like take a lot of people because most of the time if you want to hire a full crew you end up with 20 to 30 people yeah right and sometimes when i'm making documentaries i'm traveling and let's say i'm going from nigeria to kenya or to ivory coast i can carry everyone okay you know i've, I've been to ivory coast before i was making a documentary and it was just me. I was doing sound, light, camera, directing, just me. That must be very difficult. It was difficult, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, it was on the go, on the plane, we were recording content. Um, we got off the plane, we were recording content. You know, at the hotel, we were recording events, we were recording content. All of that, it was just me. And I had, I had to put the mic on the talent I was recording. Put it out, you know, hold on to that. I was carrying the camera on my shoulder, handheld, you know, I had like battery powered lights. I was holding that with one hand, camera on hand. Do you get what I mean? So it can be crazy. So, yeah, cinematographer can operate like that. Then, on some certain projects, you need to have designated people doing certain things. Sure. You know, because, you know, at the end of the day, you're just one man, you know, and you can't do everything. And the project comes out looking a certain way. Yeah, true. You know, there are certain standards that are required for some certain projects. For sure, for sure. So when you get to some certain projects, you need to actually so you can mentally function, right? Yeah. If if you if you You don't want to be carrying the lights and exactly. putting the light and, and you know, trying you to get make sure the fresh, you're going to get physically exhausted. Yeah. You won't be able to perform to your uh, um, your best yeah. you will not be able to give your all because sometimes when you get physically tired your mind also gets tired sure you know you stop to think you stop to, your imagination kind of slows down yeah, yeah. you know the, your interpretation of the story will kind of lose its weight yeah you know so but when you have people doing these things oh these people are just not there also to carry stuff for you yeah they come with their own ideas for as sure. well for you sure. know what I mean so sometimes I've been on set with my kafa Sally, uh, by the way, that's his company, Smooth Shore. Oh, dope. Yeah, that's my boy. Where is he from? Nigeria. Nigeria. His name okay. is. Okay, I've been seeing you wearing the cap, but I wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I take, Shout out I to take, him, man. Shout out to my boy, Stanley. Yeah. Big boy. Yeah. You know, so he comes with his own ideas. I'm like, you know what? I think we should, uh, maybe the, the light is kind of a little strong on this side. Do you think we should turn it down? I'm very open to suggestions, sure, by yeah, the way. Yeah. And you're like, do you think we should turn it down? You know what? Turn it down. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. So he turns it down and he looks like, Bobby, that actually looks pretty dope. You know, can we add another light this way? He's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? But add this one. You know, but I think this light can be a little too strong. So could we change that to something with a dome or something? Like, yeah, let's do that. You know, we can be moving around. Sometimes he actually saves me a budget. He saves me a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because sometimes I remember like, oh, I want like six sky panels. I was like, man, that's a lot of budget. We don't have <laughs> yeah. That. You know, can we do Nova lights instead of the sky panels? You know, okay. you know they're pretty much the same, but, you know, one is cheaper. I'm like, you know what? Do they do the same job? Just bring it on board. Yeah, you let's know. see what they do. So yeah. these guys come with their own ideas. My grip guy, my gaffer, my first AC. These are like, these three people are like my go-to guys Yeah, like, in my department. So it's important to make sure that even everyone in your team knows their role and they play their roles perfectly well. If you're bringing them on a, depending on what project it is, you don't, Absolutely. You don't just want somebody Every to Every project, do I always go with my team. Every project. And there's some certain projects that, you know, that don't require them to be there. They are so small that I can do that on my own. Yeah, yeah. You know, like when I'm making documentaries, I just like, you know what, uh, I'll just do this. So sometimes I can take just myself, the first AC, and uh, maybe my gaffer, 
who sometimes because we don't really need a lot of grip work yeah so it's just like carry tripod and all of that and sometimes it's just handheld da, 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 da. my face is is on the focus my gaffer is holding lights moving stuff around stuff like that you know? I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty interesting. I, I remember you were just talking off set, um, uh, off, uh, off, off camera here um, in one of the jobs that we we're doing. And you were just telling me about, you know, going to countries like Iran and all these other countries that have, you've been, you know, you've been going to. And just, it's so amazing to see African people in general, especially I think, you know, coming from where I'm coming from also, it's seeing people doing such amazing things and really amazing work. I mean, some of the projects you've done, which we're going to get into now, now have been really, really amazing. And I, dude, I'm sorry. I'm really glad. I'm, I'm really glad that you're here. So, I mean, you talked about how you started out in the cinem cinematography journey, uh, basically with your mother, um, you know, being a cinematographer and you then going to school for it. Um, where do you draw your inspiration as a, as a cinematographer to actually create the stuff that you create? Okay, so um, aside my mother being my first inspiration, I have people who mentored me firsthand. Yeah. There's a guy in Nigeria, he's a dope cinematographer, you should check him out. His name is Kago. Call him Bishop C in Nigeria. He's in Nigeria. And another guy called Mohammed. I thought these two people kind of like help shape the kind of how I see things. Yeah. How my mind work in a certain way. You know, I, I remember I did a short film that screened in Rwanda and I was at the film festival in Rwanda. And somebody watched the film, like, this film has a touch of Mohammed and Kago in it. Mm. You know, when someone says it has a touch of Ex yeah, well, I shot the film. Yeah. Apparently, but these two people mentored me. Yeah. So like this film has a touch of this person and this person. You know, I'm like, and I was sitting right there. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. And he was like, who shot this? Was it Kago or Mohammed? I'm like, no, there's this guy called Casey. He's sitting right there. I'm like, hey, Casey, where are you? I'm like, hey, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, you're the guy. Wow. Yeah, I could have sworn that he's one of these guys. Well, really nice to meet you. I'm like, yeah, send here. So I called my mentors. I called them on the phone. I'm like, yo, so this is what happened. They laughed, you know. You know, they were happy for me, but so yeah. these people kind of like, I I did internship with them for eight years. Wow, that's quite a while. Yeah, because I wasn't sure. First of all, I wasn't sure I wanted to be a cin full time cinematographer. Okay. Because I started off from basics, being a first AC. I first AC for four years. You know, transition to being a cam up. Okay. I did cam up for two years. And you, do you study all of these things, or is just basically teaching yourself? No, after film school. Okay. Because you know, I didn't okay. want to jump right into it. Sure, sure. You know, so I started first A scene, learning under these people. Yeah. You know, going on big projects with them because I knew I would not have access to these projects as a like, cinematographer. Yeah, yeah. So I needed to go in in a smaller capacity in order to draw from their knowledge. Sure. Right? And I was, thank God for grace. Yeah. And also for patience. I was patient enough to go in there and say, no, I'm going to drop my everything that I'm carrying and, you know, focus on learning from these people. Yeah. And I did that. It was great. It was great. It was amazing. I did all this thing for eight years with them, being their first AC and camera operating for them. It was beautiful because the experiences I got from these people, seeing how they tackle challenges, seeing how they dealt with problems that came, actually inspired me. But I didn't want to be a cinematographer. One oh, day, my wow. mentor looked at me. I'm like, oh, you know what? I think you're ready. I'm like, ready for what? <laughs> yeah. Ready for what? I'm yeah. like, no, you are ready. I'm like, okay, ready for what? Yeah. To actually be a full-time cinematographer. And one week after that conversation, I was still working at a space called Dining TV, owned by GT Bank. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I walked in. There was supposed to be a show called Skinny Girl in Transit. And then had a production, Jadisha Loshigaru. Shout out to her because my success story isn't complete without her. Yeah. You know, she was typing away on her computer. I just came back from lunch. I was just going upstairs and she's like, yo, Casey, she didn't even look up. She's like, yo, Casey. I'm like, yes. So you were shooting Skinny Girl. I'm like, wait a minute. I was supposed to be a first AC on the project. How yeah. am I the DP now? Like, you're shooting Skinny Girl. I'm like, okay, <laughs> but what happened to the DP you hired? She said, she looked up and looked at me and said, are you not confident? <laughs> yeah. In that moment, I realized like she's not Messing around. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm confident. I said, good. Go okay. design me a look and talk to Mohammed, who's going to be the director. I'm like, you know, let's work it out. I'm like, cool. And that's how you just, you dived in. I went straight into it. I did what? season one, two, three, four, five. Of Skinny Girl. Yeah, Skinny is, Girl in Transit. Is this, is, this, is this a show in Nigeria? It's a show in Nigeria. It's on YouTube. You should look it up. Oh, so definitely. That check was it out. one of my early projects before yeah. I, you know, 
I left the space, I quit my job there. Okay. And decided to be a full time freelancer working on my own. Okay. And I started my own company. So with De- Denta, is it Denta? Is that what it's called? The company? The one, uh, Denta TV. What is it called? Danny TV. Danny TV. N D A N I space tv ah, search okay. that on youtube okay so yeah. what was it was that, that? Is, exactly is actually a swahili word right oh is it it means inside inside yeah it's a swahili word oh wow. okay and you were working there what were you doing there so i was working there as a camera op okay um editor and pretty much i think danny would do everything on our own okay you know when you go to set you do the light on your own yeah you yeah. know except for when we're doing projects like skinny girl that we have to hire external crew for sure for sure but for inside shows we used to do everything on our own you know i i would shoot and edit and you know on my own <laughs> and all that stuff which is fun it yeah. was part of my learning process yeah it was part of my grooming process for sure now you know exactly what you're looking exactly for. Yeah. exactly so and also at Shout out to them. They allowed me to do some side gigs. I used to leave the office, go do some documentary work, travel, for sure, for and sure. all of that. So, so I mean, you you basically got, you know, now you're a you're full-time freelance and that job pushed you to become a full-time freelance uh, cinematographer. What is it like being a, a full-time cinematographer in Nigeria? I mean, look, I'm, you know, this is, I'm based in South Africa and I have completely no idea what it's like. I would completely love to try a different country and, you know, just or even learn what it's like in a different country to do the work that I do. Nigeria is an amazing place to work, to be honest. Like if you're a cinematographer in Nigeria. Yeah. Actually, right now, I don't think we've got a lot of them. Okay. Yeah, in Nigeria. Well, are they moving away or just generally, you know, they... they, they there's I know none quite of a couple of them that moved away. Okay. And those were some of the best hands we've got. They moved, they moved to the UK. Okay. Is that the best place to be possibly? Not really, because um, I was with some people that, you know, were trying to manage me at some point. And yeah. they were trying to push me to that side. But it didn't work out because yeah. also I had done some, a few stuff on that side. And I know what it was like. It wasn't really. And I felt like, look, I'm still young. Yeah. I've got time on my side. I'm, I intend to do this till I'm 60, 70 years old. Yeah. So I still got time. Okay. <laughs> and you can even go into writing too. Exactly. No yeah. rush. Yeah. So I don't mind staying back in Nigeria, you know, doing some projects, grooming myself, myself getting better. And, you know, maybe who knows in 10 years, if, I'm, if I feel like, oh, you know what, I conquered this side already, yeah. I should move over. Because people tell me, oh, I think you've done everything you need to do on this yeah. side. Absolutely not. Sure. There's so much to do. There are new projects that are coming up that are challenging. I had a project recently that I really like. I did one that I didn't like. You know? <laughs> so I won't be able to get to that level where I say, you know, I did this project and I love it. Okay. So and you, I can do two projects back to back that I love. And are these projects based in Nigeria? Or uh, just no, no, absolutely. Yeah. In Hollywood. We're trying to build the, the industry. You okay. Know? There aren't a lot of cinematographers. So going back to your question, you know, what it is like as a cinematographer to work in Nigeria. Yeah. It's, it's, Pizza sweet. Yeah. You know, you can enjoy it today and tomorrow you don't enjoy it. Okay. Because the projects come, come with its own challenges. There are projects that you work on that, you know, you you absolutely love it. Yeah. There are some you work on, you're like, oh my God, what kind of life choices did I make? Yeah. You know, because yeah. they are there, they exist. I'm sure they're the same thing all over the world. It's sure. the same all over the world. But yeah. Nigeria will kind of drain you at some point and sometimes it lifts your spirit so much. You're like, you know, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. So that is what it's like typically to work in Nigeria as a cinematographer. I mean, you basically just said to me now you wouldn't move away from Nigeria, which is pretty much amazing. I really love that. And I see that you've done, you know, when I'm when I go back to your website, yeah. I see that you've actually done some amazing work. Work with Bernard Bernard Boy, you've worked with Johnny Walker, MTN, DSTV. You've worked also done um some work now recently. I, I don't even even know if it's recent, but with Thames and also Wizkid under Essence. I just want to talk about the Essence song. I mean, so what what role do you play in that whole project? It's so amazing. It's one of probably some of the most you know one of the most popular songs or song anybody has ever listened to. And certainly, I've listened to, and it's so it's so amazing. And here you are, and you've worked on it. Uh, can you just tell me a little bit about it? Well, first off, I'm going to say shout out to Director K. Prago, the hooked me up on the project. Yeah, myself and Director K have been working together for years. Okay, you know, we've got an understanding. Um, we've done so many projects together. We worked on predominantly music videos. 
Okay. You know, we've done a lot of music videos together. In fact, we've done a video that won Video of the Year. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's um, amazing, man. Yeah, with um, David O's song, One Million. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, but we've done a whole bunch of stuff together so much. Yeah. That most times when he shoots, he shoots with someone else, the video drops, people tag me and say, oh, Casey did an amazing video. I'm like, bro, that, how do you do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. So, but me and him got an amazing, amazing synergy. So when he sent me the treatment for the video, it was like, yo, look at this. Wiz wants us to do this. I'm like, fuck it, man, that's great. Yeah. Sorry, can I cuss? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's like, fucking hell, man. This is so lit. Yeah. And Wiz just dropped the album, and I really liked the Essence song. I really liked it a lot. So when he sent it to me, we were going back and forth on some certain things on how he wanted some certain things to be done. And he's kind of precise with what he wants. Yeah. You know? K is very precise of what he wants. He has an idea about something. He's like, you know what? This is what I want. And then sometimes we'll fight a lot. In fact, we fight so much. And yeah. we're like, you know, no, this, <laughs> we should do this this way. We should do this this way. In fact, on the set of Essence, we actually fought. Oh, but you and you him? Yeah, we know, not like fought. Like, yeah, say. Yeah, like we had a huge argument. argument we disagreed yeah. on something. Yeah. And Wiz was standing right there looking at us. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, looking at me, like, he's like, you know what? Like, bro, I don't like this. I'm like, fucking hell, I don't like it too. And like, you know what? I told him, like, you know what? Fuck off. He's like, fuck off. <laughs> so I walked away. He walked away. It was so, it was such a dramatic situation. Yeah. And we turned around about the same time. I looked at him, he looked at me, and we smiled, like, you know what? Let's get it done. Yeah, yeah we can do this. <laughs> you know, it was really a crazy experience, but my role, in essence, I pretty much like um, designed the look oh, wow. for what K wanted. Yeah. You know, the bedroom scene. Yes. You know, there are some scenes that didn't make the edit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there are some scenes that didn't make the edit, but the bedroom scenes. The couch, that couch is legendary, bro. Yeah. That legendary yeah. couch. And it was Kay's idea. Kay, Kay wanted a fucking couch. I'm like, bro, why do you want a couch? Yeah. Like, yeah, bro, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but I just, my instinct says, put this couch here and I want it. So yeah. let's put it there. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's be like, like, what color? I'm like, you know what? I don't know, man, but I think a red couch will bang, given that the background is blue. He's like, yeah. like yeah, 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 that's fine. If we find a red couch, bring it. So we found the couch, the car scene, the models, and all of that. K, it was actually the car scene where we fought over, but eventually the scene. K also is an amazing, like he's so creative. Like the scene where we were by the car and he was chilling by the car with the girls and he was performing. It was little all K. Yeah. We were moving and we were losing time. He was like, bro, you know what? Let's shoot him here. I'm like, wait, what? Not right now? I'm like, yeah. So I called everybody. I called my gaffer, Ibra. Ibra, come. Come here. <laughs> yeah. I called the group guy. Yo, come here. Everybody came, like, give me a bounce here. Boom, give me an M16 here. Boom. Just give me this here. Boom. I put the camera on my shoulder and I got, I got on an Apple box. I was holding the camera and I was... Do, 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 do. He was like, yeah, let's go. I, I, wish, <laughs> I wish I had the BTS, man. Yeah, but it yeah. was a crazy experience, you know. And also lighting that exterior scene was kind of weird because I remember we were already losing time. It was already getting dark. It was around past 6 p.m. Some stuff oh, like shit, that. Okay. Yeah. So was this all shot in Nigeria? No, it was in Ghana. In Ghana? Yeah, we were in Ghana. Okay. We shot, did a couple of projects in Ghana. I, it was during that trip. I go, I think, no, okay, we went to Ghana twice. Came the first time. We shot Essence the first time. You know, something happened. We went back to Nigeria. Shoot it again. Then, no, no, no. Went back to Nigeria. Then we said, oh, you know what? I'm ready to do it again. So yeah. we came back and did it a second time. Oh, shucks. You know? <laughs> and after that, we did a couple of stuff with Wiz that, that never came out. You know? Uh, also, we shot some Bonnie Boy stuff. Okay. You know? It was from that trip, I came to ACA for the first time. It, what, 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 were you also working here? Yeah. I came to SA for the first time. From Ghana, I flew to SA for the very first time to work. So, KC, we've talked about you know, your childhood, we've talked about, you know, you going to school, the inspiration. We've also talked about how you got into the journey of cinematography. I still feel like I want to know so much because I, I feel like there's so much that you've got in you and time is just running out. I know that you need to fly back to Nigeria and, you know, yeah, time is really against us. So I just want to talk about um, what are the probably three important things that any cinematographer that wants to come into the game should ideally know. Could be three, it could be five, um, but just more than three would really be great. They should know or should they should, what they should know or learn. They should even learn, even learn actually. I remember when I was about to make my feature film with Daryl, a guy called Daryl Lighton, amazing director, super, super 
cool. Yeah. And super, super intelligent. One of my favorite writers in the world, Daryl Lighton. Oh, no caps. He's an amazing writer and great director. By the way, his new film is out called uh, House of Money. House of Money on Netflix or is this? No, it's in cinema, it's doing cinema runs. Right okay, now. okay. Yeah. His film called Knockout Blessing. I was DP on the show. So my first film, I was um, worried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I had sweaty palms and all that shit. So I called my mentor and I said, I'm doing this project. I don't know what to do. Yeah. And he said to me, he said, keep it simple. Yeah. Don't do too much. Okay. Just remember that the story is king. Mm. Don't lose the story while trying to be fancy. Don't lose the story. While trying to be fancy. So I was in a call with him. I remember, I remember where I was. I remember exactly where I sat. I was sitting on top of my car. And when I made that phone call, it was night. It was night that night. And Daryl was there. Well, he was talking to some people on the other side. So I made that phone call and he said, keep it simple. Yeah. And he's giving me some of the best advice ever. Kago, Bishop C. Blunt. That's his name. Yeah. And he like looked at me and said, one time as well, because I, I shot something like super cool stuff. Yeah. I was so excited. So I sent it to him like, look at what I shot. You know, I was <laughs> yeah. feeling good. Check it out. You know, check it out. He watched it. Then he called me back like, this shit is whack. Oh, wow. Yeah, he told me. It that. must have crushed you. He said that this shit is whack. Sure. And I, was, I sat down there on the phone like, what? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, yeah. This is one of my best. This is arguably my best job so far. Yeah. He said he doesn't like it. That all I do is shoot fancy stuff, but I never like get in depth into the story. So he starts to ask me like, okay, how do you see this character? Yeah. When you read it, what were you thinking? How did you imagine the character? What did you, what kind of headspace do you think the character was in? I'm like, at that point I realized that I didn't know all of these things. So the psychology of filmmaking, I didn't like, I was just shooting like pretty images. I didn't understand like, you know, some certain things like camera heights, how it, in relation to the actor, mm. camera movement, all that stuff. That, it crushed me, yeah, but it taught me a huge lesson. Yeah. You know? It makes a whole lot of sense now that you explain it like that. I sat back and said, you know what? And he told me one thing, he said, you need to watch better films. Shucks. You need to watch better films so you can develop your mind. And not always are watching action films or things that would just entertain you. Watch boring stuff. Yeah. You learn a lot. And he, yeah. I remember he gave me this we film. We can definitely take that. He had given me films. This film called Citizen Kane. Yeah. It was made in the 50s, like a year before. I never watched it. So he gave me, he said, did you ever watch Citizen Kane that I gave to you? I said, no, sir. So, yeah. So you should do it. Watch it. I turned that film on, it was so boring. <laughs> I watched it, I forced myself to finish it. Then one day Almost I came done. back, I was home. I wasn't doing anything. I was like, Almost. You know what? Let me actually watch this thing this. with an open mind. So I sat down, I watched it. Since oh. that time, I've watched it more than eight times. Oh, shucks. And just because it's so, it's that good. That story is so important. Like, it was so good that Every time, it's one of my first references I give to anybody that say, you know what, I want to learn about film. I say, go watch Citizen King. Citizen King. Yeah. Definitely watch that out. Film by Orson Welles. Uh, that's his name, yeah? Orson Welles. Definitely. You know, it's one of the, in my books, one of the greats. He didn't make a lot of great projects. He made a lot of projects, but not all of them were great. But Citizen King was outstanding. Shucks. I'll definitely, definitely check that out. So you've def you mentioned to us that we need to, you, you know one of the things you'd say is watch better films, and also just forget about you know the um, the fancy stuff storyline. Focus on the story. Story is king at all times. Um, and I just want to wrap it up. I know that you I'm definitely. Sorry. One last thing he yes. said to me. Yes. That stood out as well. He said, "If people go watch your film, the film that you shot, <clears throat> and they say, oh man." I don't understand the story. I don't understand this film. But the cinematography was great, though. Then you've done a bad job. Shucks. You need to, the story needs to be un relatable. Yeah. People said, need to understand if, it. If, the, if people watch the film or watch whatever it is that you shot and they say, oh, 
I don't understand it, but the cinematography is great. <laughs> That's you normally what, I, what happens with me. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. You've done a bad job. So, you know, like, you, oh, the, there has to be a balance where these two things meet. And I mean, it's, so it's rightly so to say no to some jobs if you feel like they won't, exactly. you won't be able to tell the story properly. Right now, I'd like, I don't even take all the projects that come to me. Yeah. I can't even take all of them. Yeah. Not that I don't, I can't do all of them yeah. because there's always something For sure. coming up. But when you look at all of them, I kind of wait and say, oh, which works better? Which story do I think I want to, you know, dive into? Which yeah. is more challenging for me? Which is more interesting for me? Yeah. Which will tell a better story? Yeah. You know, all that. And so that's just basically it. Dude, this conversation has been so amazing. I have so many for, like questions for you, but I definitely will wrap it up on here. Um, thank you so much, Casey, for joining B-Roll Conversations. Um, shout out to you, man. Shout out, you've really been an amazing gent. I think we spent like eight days together or more, and I just learned so much just from watching you. Like, you know, you're such a, you know, you're a very reserved person, but when it's time to do the work, you really do the work, and you're passionate about what you're doing because I see it in your eyes. I see it in the work that you're doing. Sometimes you, I can see this guy is getting angry because somebody jumped in his shot, and he had it perfectly well. So I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, but please go check out KC on social media. On Twitter, it's Obia. Obia Julu KC. Yeah. O-B-I-A-J-U-L-U-K-C. And on Instagram, it's KC Obia Julu. The other and, way around. Yeah, <laughs> and the other way around. And your website is www.obiajulukc.com. Yeah. Thank you so much, champ. See you next time. Thank you so much. Jeez. You should come to Nigeria, man. I definitely look forward to coming to Nigeria. I will man. host you if you come to Nigeria. Hey, guys, you heard that. B-roll team, let's go to Nigeria. At least one or two of us, let's go to Nigeria. Casey is going to host us, man. It's such an amazing place. B-roll conversations, we out. Till the next time. Peace.